And welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for March of 2023. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. I'm Julia Mijas, and I'm in San Francisco, California. Let's take a look at what's happening for you in March. Well, Capricorn, let's jump into this with two of our favorite asteroid goddesses, Juno and Ceres. I want to start with Ceres. She's in your own house, the 10th house a very Capricornian place, having to do with career and authority, building, reputation, and expertise. And so anything in the 10th house, even traveling through it, is often kind of under pressure to perform. And uh, how much more so when that planet is retrograde? So Ceres, what does she have to do with? Well, she has to do with the things that connect us to the physical world, our physical bodies, the food we put into them, and the money we make to sustain them. I think of her retrogradation periods as having a lot to do with finances. People's finances have a tendency to get tangled up. There is confusion, maybe some bad data from the past that you have to go back and correct. Retrogradation has to do with that that uh, need, you know, kind of things grinding to a halt and that need to go um, uh, backward looking and inward looking for, um, you know, to find what is the problem that has got you stuck and then solve it before you can move forward. So Sirius is traveling along through Libra, a sign that has everything to do with balance and design, harmony, symmetry, and also good manners. So Ceres would like to have any dialogues that you need to have about money go in a particularly smooth and socially adept way. I mean, she wants you to be a good negotiator, but also, you know, there may be some stuff that uh, that is hard to talk about, uh, but that needs to be talked about. And it might particularly come up in the workplace, which I'm saying because of the 10th house position of this series. So this might be a time when you feel like you want to do a reassessment of, of what you're earning and whether perhaps your work could be uh, valued more highly and your income could go up. Now, I'm not saying that a series retrograde period in your 10th house is a good or lucky time to ask for a raise. I think it's expressly not, but you might find yourself itching to do that. So I would wait to have the, uh, I would say, you know, for now, while Ceres is retrograde, stick with the conversation about it in your own mind and uh, don't share with your outside voice until Ceres goes direct. That would be a much better time to actually go to your boss or whoever, you know, has the power to write that check and, um, and have that conversation. If after Ceres retrograde, you decide that it's a conversation that you need to have. Now, the other planet that I want to talk about is Juno. She's an asteroid in the asteroid belt, and she is a goddess of social graces. Uh, most particularly, she is a networker and matchmaker. She is a connector up of people with each other. And she's been traveling along through the fourth house uh, since last month. The fourth house being home and family, heritage, domestic life, uh, roots, putting down roots, uh, and the people that you live with in your home. And uh, Juno brings a wonderful social feel. So you may find uh, since last month that you've kind of been wanting to entertain, invite people over. Perhaps in particular, you've been wanting to build community using your home as a staging area for that. And it's a wonderful way to spend Juno in the fourth house. If you're married, you may find that um, you've been putting a lot of effort into conversations with your partner about how your home could be optimized for yourselves and any offspring that may be, you know, ratting about on the rugs, shall we say. 
Juno's traveling through Aries, and so these conversations might be particularly direct. Juno is, however, uh, during the course of the month, going to move on into the next house, which is the fifth house right here. Now, the fifth house is a house of fun, pleasure, and play, and entertainment. Trips to Vegas, even love affairs are governed by this house. Uh, it's the showy, glowy house that's ruled by Leo. So Juno here suggests that maybe it's time for you and your partner to have some fun. And I like to think of Juno as the spouse of the Zodiac in a way more serious about relationship than Venus is. Venus is more about the feeling of connectedness and love and affection, whereas Juno is more about the contract and, uh, and the agreement and, um, and it's about serious long-term relationship. And in every long-term relationship, there needs to be a time and place for just enjoying life together. So while Juno is traveling through the fifth house, you might feel like uh, there's some deferred fun that you and your partner could have, whether that's your business partner or your actual spouse. And having fun together can really support and build on the bond. So I do suggest that you actually do that while Juno traverses this house. She's going to be in the fifth house until well into next month. Hey, Julia, what's up with Venus, Mercury, and Mars for the Capricorns of the world? Well, good question, Jamie. Hey there, Capricorn. Let's start with Venus. Venus represents your relationships. She's a planet of harmony and pleasure. So everyone likes to hear about Venus and she begins the month in your fourth house. This is a house of family and home. So when Venus is in this house for the first half of the month, you're really going to be kind of a homebody. Um, you'll be having a much better time hanging out on your couch and watching Netflix than you would going out and meeting up with friends, for example. Venus in the fourth is also a wonderful time for getting along well with family or even people you live with like roommates too. Now by March 16th, Venus enters your fifth house and she absolutely loves this house. It's a house of dating. So if you're single, wonderful, wonderful time to get out there and date, especially after you've been so uh, such a homebody for the first half of the month. Uh, Venus in the fifth can also be great if you're in a relationship and you want to just go out and have some fun with your partner. This is a house of amusements and and creativity and um you know any types of fun whether you like gambling whether you like sports whether you like bars and clubs festivals it's all the fifth house um also a great transit for artists too venus is a really creative planet and this is a creative house so it matches up really nicely now mercury which represents your mind only is in your second house for the first day of the month that's a house of finance meaning that you know you've been you've been focused on your finances mainly last month but by march 2nd mercury moves into your third house and this house is a natural fit for mercury um it represents travel it represents learning and education and communication all things that mercury also symbolizes so fabulous transit if you're learning new things if you have to do any writing and you might find yourself really busy around your neighborhood taking a lot of little trips maybe little weekend trips with this transit too now, by March 18th, um, Mercury is going to move into your fourth house, just as Venus leaves here um, a couple of days before. And again, this is the house of family and home. So Mercury in the fourth means that you'll be really preoccupied mentally with your, your housing situation. You might be thinking a lot about your domestic life, maybe thinking about how you can improve your home, whether you want to move, whether you want to buy a home, sell a home, you know, all of that type of stuff. And Mercury in the fourth might mean that you are also communicating a lot more with your parents, finally picking up your mom's phone calls or, you know, people that you live with too. Now, finally, I'm going to mention a few things about Mars, some good news, because Mars is finally leaving that sixth house of yours, and it's been here for months. It's been here since late fall, because Mars did a whole retrograde cycle here. So, spent a lot of time in this house, and the sixth house is a health house and a work house, so you have been dealing with tons of frustrations at work, maybe not getting along with the people you work with, or the people that you hire you for things, too. Um, the sixth house is also a health house, so maybe you 
you've run into health frustrations along this cycle as well. Um, definitely not fun. Now, on March 25th, Mars is going to be moving into your seventh house. This is a partnership and a relationship house, as well as a house of contractors. So it'll be nice just to get a different change here. Mars in the seventh can mean that you have more disagreements with your romantic relationship than usual or any partnership you're part of, such as a business relationship. Now, it's nice that Venus is in the fifth during this because that means even if you're not getting along with your partner all the time or seeing eye to eye, you guys can still go out and have fun together. So that helps out. And Mars in the seventh can also be a frustrating time for hiring people. If you need to hire someone for advice, like a lawyer or a doctor, definitely, definitely could be a little bit frustrating. But uh, yeah, and I know you have some things about the moon for us, Jamie. I do. Well, we've got a full moon in Virgo, and that happens uh, March 7th. It lands in your ninth house of growth and expansion, higher education, expanding your mind through learning um, and uh, exploration, beliefs, and being a seeker, too. A full moon is generally a time when passions can run high. There can be a lot of emotion. You can feel like your cup runneth over with feelings during a full moon. This one's in Virgo, which is a little bit more restrained. And you know, it's kind of interesting when I think about Capricorn, uh, because from Capricorn's point of view, when we put Capricorn over on the rising, the realm of beliefs and growth and expansion, which is the ninth house, is governed by Virgo, which is a sign of the small. And that's quite a contradiction, right? And it just kind of speaks to me of how Capricorn really appreciates, like when Capricorn wants to learn and expand, it actually goes small, which is to say for Capricorn, the, the learning that is the most valuable is training in some form of expertise that requires a meticulous eye for detail. And so if you are engaged in any kind of training like that towards a particular expertise or skill, you might find under this moon that you have a lot of passion for it or that you have a lot of feelings about it, which might be occasionally whiny. We generally feel moons for the two days leading up to them and the day after them as they're fading out. You can find out a lot more about this moon on our monthly forecast page at our website, pandoraastrology.com. There's a video posted on our forecast page about this moon and the other moon this month, which I'll be describing shortly. But um, I want to add, we're calling this moon shape and mold in your quirky way, because there's just a gorgeous trine to Uranus. Also some help from Pallas Athena and a bit of stress introduced by Mars. So there might be a sense of pressure to proceed along faster than you really want to go, making you skip over some of the details, and that may get you a little bit irritated, Capricorn. But I think that this moon... Uh, in Virgo, uh, other than that, you know, little fly in the ointment, if you will, uh, is going to feel pretty good. The next thing that happens during the course of the month is on March 20th, we have the seasonal change. The sun moves on into your fourth house, uh, which is the sign of Aries for you, Capricorn. And um, the fourth house, of course, signifies home and family, domestic life, heritage, and roots. It's that nest that we want to rest in at the end of the day. Not that you ever rest, Capricorn, uh, which is, you know, kind of fitting considering that Aries is here. And there are piles of Aries placements right here in the fourth house this month, this month. So you might feel like you want to go into an energetic frenzy at home and uh, and just kind of like, you know, whisk through the whole place with a broom, give it a clean sweep. This is the beginning of springtime after all. So you might find yourself very involved in spring cleaning and, uh, and deploying a lot of vigor towards that. Uh, when this sun is joined by the moon on the next day, March 21st, we see an intensification of these themes. We're calling this moon, clear your head and begin your expedition. And it really does carry that, um, that feeling of the force of spring. There is a lot of energy and vigor and drive 
in this moon. It also includes quite a bit of cerebral energy because of the presence of Mercury. And there's a square to that pesky Mars, which once again is just sort of behind you with his foot planted against your butt, giving you a push. And so it might be hard to slow down during this moon, but, but being carried along on the, you know, the fiery wave of inspiration to really clear the decks at home might just be worth it. You'll uh, enjoy the sun's movement through this house for about 30 days from the day it entered in, which was the 20th. And so definitely time for that spring cleaning. If you love Pandora Astrology's free and informative horoscopes, please do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share our horoscopes with your friends. Horoscopes are fun, but they're also really general. If you want to explore this month's themes more personally, we'd love to meet with you in a real live reading where you can gain powerful insights and learn what you need to make the big decisions in your career, family, or relationship. You'll find the link in the description below. Enjoy this beautiful springtime, and until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.